morning and said, oh I'm going to turn on the stream and watch. So we got to get her baby boy in here, uh, get some daddy chatty interviews where he can talk. In the meantime, let me say, the biggest problem with, with sideboard and main deck cards um, is that premium sideboard cards should be drafted early by players who are drafting niche strategies that aren't interrupted by other people. Same way you can pick lands over, uh, you can overemphasize lands. I want to put on those headphones. The pink ones right pink there? Pink ones, yes. Hard to miss. Yeah. How's it going, Chad? How are you feeling today? Oh, How stellar. are you feeling after the draft? Um, I'm going to play some magic. Okay, well, you're going to have to play fun. the hell out of that deck. I, it's it's going to happen. All right, I'm I like gonna it. I'm going to get at least one game win uh, on the day. <laughs> Chad, do you think Emily will be playing in the next VRD? Brandon has trained Sam to she, play in these VRDs. She'll do a lot better than me, probably. Ah, uh, um, okay, yeah. So what's so your, so your confidence the bar level low. as setting of the bar right low now? For her. Yeah. yeah, yeah, your no, confidence I, level as right now is... It's, in all seriousness, like, I, I think I'm medium. I think... Okay. think it started getting away from me. I, I've been focusing very much on my game plan. Uh-huh. And have a lot of cards that are just going to kind of sit off to the side because I got too many redundancies. Mm -hmm. uh, don't have sideboard mm -hmm. plans for most people. Don't know what most people are playing. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. Which is the the fun of the you know, a format that you're not super so, familiar with. Uh, are all the VRDs that you've participated in before have they all been untimed? Uh, uh, for the last like, like few um, years, yeah. On yeah, like uh, Excel sheets you do over the course of a week you have like a day to make your choice yeah it takes a long time so did you did you find that the pressure of the in-person the the time constraints did you find that to be a real problem for you i don't think it was a problem looking back at the list and looking at more optimal choices probably would be gotcha if that makes sense gotcha. so like mm -hmm. i didn't no, feel I the pressure it. of the uh, of it going too fast and like i'm under the gun i need to just mm -hmm. make a garbage pick uh you know, the beauty of the format is kind of uh, every card that you pick is good. Even if it's right. not the best, it's still a good card. Mm -hmm. So you can very easily, I think, trick yourself into being like, yeah, all my, all my picks are great. Like They've all been good cards so far. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then you look back and you're like, oh, fuck, I probably could have gotten a lot of better cards, uh, you know, if I had rearranged some things or done something differently. So I could definitely understand that being a bit of an issue. And, and we had talked yeah. about that. As being something, you know, the the time to draft. We missed our New Year's draft this year, right? Um, which we were going to do in person with that sort of timing constraint, mm -hmm. and we were talking about the differences of that versus an untimed uh, draft on Excel. Yeah, I think one of the big things for me is having been generally out of Magic for a number of years at this point. Yeah, like I don't yep. keep up with the new cards that are printed, uh, and we saw this with uh, one of the Spell Matters uh, guys that gets bigger. Um, as you cast stuff or makes tokens, they're yeah, I kind of been one reprinted. Yes, mm -hmm. so I drafted the subpar one before. Whereas if I had a day to look, I'd be like, all right, this is the the function I want in my deck. Have they reprinted anything? Yeah, uh, that's better. Yeah. So I came back and got it, and I think redundancy is good there. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, uh, your deck definitely looks like it's got a fairly strong overall strategy. Um, not having specific sideboard stuff. Yep. What I have a feeling that'll mean for you, if I had to guess, would be that you'll probably build your main deck, and then every time you're going to the sideboard, you'll just take a look and say, is there anything that I could maybe just upgrade a little bit? You yeah. know, is uh, is this counter spell maybe going to be a little bit better than this one? Um, yeah, do I, want, do I want no burn? Do I want a little bit of burn? Do I want a little more? Mm -hmm. Do I want better counters type things? Yeah. yeah. And you've definitely got some real powerful stuff going on. You've got... You know, some very low costs, like some some very versatile low cost stuff, mm -hmm. like Hull Breacher and Brazen Borrower, Lightning Bolt, um, these kinds of effects that really are very very versatile. And I've noticed when I've drafted my mono blue decks, usually what I'm looking at is okay, every one of my cards interacts with every single other Magic card that's ever been printed. So right. when I go to the sideboard, I'm narrowing down to get a little bit more mana efficient or a little bit more powerful. Yep. You have plenty of power uh, mm -hmm. looking at the rest of this draft. You've got Lutri plus Recall. You've got Snapcaster Recall. You've got 
uh, Dak, Fade, and Hole Breacher to make them discard two cards. You make two treasure. Right. You've got Lutri Fire Blast to finish people off from very high life totals. Mm -hmm. If you're triggering some prowess, you're triggering some of your some of your creatures. Some of the newer creatures say um, when you cast or copy a right. spell, um, which are interesting. I don't know if you have any of those specifically, but you've got Sprite Dragons, you've got Counter Spells, you've got vis Ancestral Visions to go along with Lutri, so that yep. you know, hey, this is coming off to spend this next turn. I'm going to go ahead and pick up my Lutri this turn to yep. set it up. So you certainly have a lot of power, um, and you have interaction. Mm -hmm. So I think for as fair of a draft as this looks, I wouldn't count your deck out. I think you've got a lot of stuff going on for you. Yeah, I think there's uh, the definite potential. Again, I'm kind of trying to look at the, the screen here and see mm -hmm. what yeah. everyone else is in at this point. Um, like I know there's a reanimation deck, and I think you've got ways for that. You know, it's the counters hopefully are good enough there. Yeah, Sam's playing a pretty interesting uh, like reanimator aggro deck. She's almost playing an aristocrat style deck where she's going to be kind of sacking some of her stuff for value, picking up creatures out of her graveyard, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, it's pretty interesting. Both Sam and Jeff definitely made their decks a little vulnerable to graveyard hate mm -hmm. and graveyard interaction. Sam, I noticed, picked up a lot of uh, graveyard counter spells uh, or uh, cards. Yes, uh, herself yeah. uh, to prevent that. Which is interesting because you didn't wind up touching black. Normally, you're kind of a black gamer uh, for VRDs, right? You you play a lot of yep. black spells. Yeah. So um, it's a color that you know when you do a few and you get used to it, you know those cards are kind of your your initial go-to. Um, but I had the first seed. I took Recall, uh, and then I got Snapcaster and Force. So I was blue, and I had kind of on my sheet, I'm like, which color do I want to kind of pair with this? Because um, I didn't I didn't want to try to do mono blue uh, today. Fair so, enough. Um, Can't argue with that. <laughs> you will. Uh, but uh, I kind of was looking, and I saw red was maybe open I kind of when I made that decision. Mm -hmm. And when I looked back up, uh, Dylan, a couple had, people had, had planted <laughs> some red flags. All the fetches were gone, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, so I took some subpar fixings, probably earlier than needed. I just well, really want to make sure I had that option. I do believe that when everyone else got caught up picking lands for a couple rounds, uh, you were the person, the single person in the draft that made out the best with it. You just took some some nice quality colored spells, maybe not in the perfect order. But sure. getting two picks ahead of everybody else and then taking some more mediocre fixtures after that, yep. I think is really the right choice. And I, I think you navigated that very well. So good good on you for that. Yeah. Uh, that's definitely, I think, uh, huh, I'll, I won't give Noah too much grief for this, but I think Noah got lost in the sauce. As soon as he saw other people picking lands, he picked lands. Those lands were not even on our list like <laughs> that we came up with. There were like sure. 15 non-basic lands. None of them were fetches and ghouls. They were oh, wow. all... Yeah. Pain lands and, and lands that have a colors mana and, and spell lands and all these things include stuff. So he got a little, he missed, in my opinion, some pretty crucial picks uh, as a by result of picking up fetch lands, lands and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and ultimately, I think maybe lost some cards at the end of the draft too. So, sure. Um, way to go on that. Nice job. Good work. Um, how do you think you're going to do? I, I, I think uh, I'm hoping for five wins. Five right, minutes. and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I, I definitely don't think it, it could be much stronger, uh, but it's got, like you said, it's got potential. It's got the power to be there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. And then, do you think who's which team do you think is going to win, St. Louis or Chicago? I mean, is St. Louis even here today? I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I know. Uh, exactly. I think obviously, Chicago. Boom. You want to you want to shout anybody out? You want to see? Uh, Kids are watching right Hi, Mom. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> Emily Oliver. I don't know if y'all are there, but... Uh, Delightful. Hey, cheer me on. boys in the house, uh, <laughs> go get your pizza or build your deck or whatever. Yeah, and try to build a deck, yeah. Get under camera, baby. We're waiting to see you, all right? Seems good. See uh, send somebody else in. I don't care who. Anyone Anybody. else. Any, any other single human being. Caterberg, go home. You already are home, baby. Sorry, I don't know if you recall the last time I was here. I called this my new domain, okay? My house. <laughs> That's fun. It's glad I'm actually seeing and giving Chad's deck a little bit of a critical analysis. I actually do not think he's in as bad a shape. He, when I talked to him, he didn't think he was in that bad a shape in between rounds. I was a little frustrated with the way him and Dylan were, were eating each other alive. But... uh. 
I, I will say, ah, this microphone's killing me. Um, I will say, uh, oh, sorry. he was always more confident than, than I was maybe giving him credit for. And I don't think his deck looks too bad in retrospect. Yo, Jeff, what's up, my man? Not much, man. How's it going? It's S good. Slap those headphones on. Let's uh, let's chat for a minute. Already. So I feel like we had a conversation. Yes. That was only to make me look like a fool. No, what no, 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 no. Huh? Because it, <laughs> essentially, as soon as I sat down, mm -hmm. I realized that cephalid illusionists exist. That's a very cool one. And very big throwback. Yeah. Also lends itself to the intuition being a one card combo. So I just went that route. Absolutely. Very cool. Um, I actually really liked the way you dug in and doubled down on a lot of that graveyard combo stuff because a lot of the stuff that you were finding seemed like it made so much sense. Yeah. Um, Savine's Reclamation, I had kind of gushed about when you told me your plans with intuitioning it and then picking up either of your Time Vault key combo pieces. Right. Uh, you know, give me one, I'll reanimate the other, or I'll just reanimate them both. Exactly. Um, and then a lot of your other combo pieces seem to go along with that stuff really well. I'm a little, con I'm a little, so now I'm kind of on the other side. Before, I wanted you to ditch the Thoracle and play right. the adventure stuff. Yeah. Now, it kind of feels like you've gone a little bit the other direction, which I like. Mm. I like a lot of the stuff that you found, but now I'm feeling like you should maybe kick some of those more fair beatdown creatures oh, back gone. of the bus. They're, they're all in the sideboard now. Nice. Yeah. And they could be useful. Like, right. Like, there are some matchups here that I really can imagine all of those cards being great in. Yeah, like, I think against Noah, in particular, I'm, I am I don't think I'm going to be able to combo against him. It is, was it, yeah, yeah, so... Yeah, he's, he's got some goofy prison stuff. Right, I don't want to, I don't want to have the combo at all against Endurance. Mm -hmm. Like, that just feels abysmal. Yeah, it feels like a real good way to lose the game. Yeah, and then the same thing with Sam, because she has, like, Four pieces of graveyard removal. Yep. Mm -hmm. So sure. against against those matchups, for sure, I'm just going to go into the adventure route. I like that. Very cool. So it kind of gives you two different, like, macro game plans. Right. And then your interactive spells can be flexed around to either one. Right. Um, makes a lot of sense. You had picked a new card. Can you um, scroll to the bottom of the Oh, one T. Um, I was thinking the, like, Collected Company-esque spell. Kylo's oh, yeah, Reconstruction. Kalo's Reconstruction. So that's a card you're planning on only playing on the sideboard, or are you planning? No, on I'm playing them in the main get, deck. Um, yeah, because it hits every basically everything in your deck. Right, right? like so right now, my deck is pretty much a handful of threes and all twos. Nice. So like play it on five. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, assemble a two card combo. And you've got the fair Luris. You're not right. companioning it. Yeah, hundred percent fair Luris. When you're looking at cards like. Uh, intuition really right. helps make for some nice piles yeah especially later on in the game yep. when you're like well you know my opponent maybe is interacting with me a lot but i've got all these different ways to sort of rebuy myself exactly yeah that's nice i like that a lot nice how uh how do you feel like like what would you rate your deck post draft you know compared to the field what do you think um Set i'm really excited about it I, I i'm actually really excited about it as mm -hmm. long as i don't play against any main deck, uh, graveyard shenanigans, mm -hmm. all the decks seem really slow. Even the combo-ish decks, mm -hmm. like, they're going to fill my hand. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they're, they're playing draw sevens. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel I feel pretty solid against it. Like, Absolutely. hopefully Grand Abolisher and um, the guy whose name I always forget, uh, Ranger Captain, mm -hmm. do a lot mm -hmm. of work. Yes. Absolutely. And there's so many ways to just get them back. Um, all right, last question for you. I know uh, Brandon was telling me you guys didn't do too much collaboration working together before the draft, right? Like before, li like leading up to today, but you're still repping Team St. Louis. Do you yeah. think Team St. Louis or Team Chicago is going to come out ahead today? Um, man, so look at the whole draft. What do you think? Team Chicago kind of cannibalized themselves with um, the competing blue decks, uh -huh. so I, I, I feel like we have a pretty good shot because all of our decks are completely different. I like that. Yeah. That seems like a smart play. Good luck Thanks, to you, man. Jeff. Good luck constructing your deck. I can't wait to Thank see you play. You. We're back in. Yeah. Looks like we are going to our first match with uh, Swifty and Sam getting played.